I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Happy Thanksgiving. I have a lot to be thankful for this year. One is this Inkscape community where we can share our techniques. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do this spiral text effect. It's very easy. We'll just use a gradient and a path effect called tiling. So you can expand out the text and then spin it. You can choose any words you wanna type out, any color scheme. We'll start right now. First, let's set up the page. Go up to File, Document Properties. And because I want it to be a square, the default A4 template has a height of 297. Let's change the width to 297. We're gonna also adjust the page color and make it black. So click on page, choose black, X out of that, X out of that, and we're good to go. The text tool right here is gonna let you type out whatever you want. I'll do grow, laugh, live. I think it actually looks better with a heavier font up in the control area. Instead of normal, this is Arial normal. I'll go down to heavy. Now we need to put our writing onto a circle. So we'll go to the circles and ellipses tool. Holding shift and control, I can draw open a perfect circle. To visualize what we're doing here, I don't need a fill. I don't need this circle to be filled. So I'll hit the X to X out of the fill. And if you're using the color ribbon to add a stroke, hold shift and click any color you want. This is a shortcut if you want to have your workspace clean and not have the fill and stroke menu open. We'll use that later. To put the text onto the circle, click the text, hold shift, collect the circle, go to text, put on path. I purposely left it open like this because here's the beauty. If you deselect everything and only choose the guide circle, now I can do control to keep the circle uniform and minimize it to make my text come all the way around right about there. If you've seen previous tutorials to lock in this circle text, click on the text itself, go up to path, object to path. That locks it in so I can take it off and delete the guide circle. Now let's use the fill and stroke menu that's located under object, fill and stroke. Pops up in the sidebar, you can see we're on fill. We don't wanna be on solid flat color. Let's go over to radial gradient. At the most basic level, the left side is the center of the radial gradient. It's white, full opacity. And the far side, if you click the other arrow, it's taking that white and it's full transparency. So come down to the A slider, this is the alpha slider, and make that full opacity. And because I wanna do a blue color gradient, when I have this side selected, I can move my color wheel to blue. Let's do something like a dark blue. Click over to the other side of the gradient, and why don't we choose some type of lighter teal. You can't see much right now because the center part, if you go to edit gradients over here, it's saying this lighter color starts right here. Let's move it so it starts closer to right there. You see how it brightens up? Whatever color scheme you choose, move it so you can see the whole gradient inside of each letter. I'll go to selector tool because before we do the path effect step, I want to shrink this down. We're going to grow it out so I need more space. I'll do shift and control Let's bring it down about here. And for precision, up in your menu bar, this bar graph, this is the align and distribute menu. If you choose that, I can say relative to page, I'll center my selection vertically and horizontally. Now with it selected, go up to path, path effects. This is the new Inkscape 1.3 path effects menu. You can hit the delta and see all the choices, or you can just type in we want tiling, and the default shows up three by three. It's gonna tile out our original, one, two, three, one, two, three. We want one by 10 to start. That makes one row and 10 columns. While we're here down towards the bottom, choose split elements. I want that so the gradient appears on each one. Then go to edit paths by node tool. Don't be distracted by all the nodes it's showing. What we want, if you zoom in, is this node right here. This is a path effects node that lets us move them all on top of each other. I'll grab it and stack them all up. Once you have them lined up like that, you can do a shortcut, this magnifying glass with a rectangle. This is zoom to page. Here's the settings, mirror mode, keep it on the first one. Skip everything all the way down to scale. You wanna choose the second button and you can type in a scale percentage that you want or hit the plus and watch what happens. Here's 1%, two, three, four, five, six. We'll take it out to 10. Do you see each iteration of it? One below is rotate, same thing. Go to the second button and hit the plus to watch it spin. Here's one degree, two, three, four. I think I had it three before, let's do four for kicks. Now, if you want to play with the color scheme, you have to have the original one selected. Go back up to 
fill and stroke menu. And here's what I meant before. You can drag one of the sides to change the gradient. Or I'm going to say before I do this file, save. You can add another stop in the gradient by double clicking on the bar. But for this, it's a little bit too busy. If you don't like what you just added, click on it again, hit delete. This looks pretty nice if you want to have a nice geometric organic look, but if you want to call out the text better, grab the top one and do control D. That's going to duplicate it, pull it aside. You can't instinctively just change this top one. They're all linked. What you need to do is if you want to have this top one changed to a different color so it's easier to read, you have to go to edit, clone, unlink clone. Now it's its own piece and I can change it to something else. I think in the thumbnail I did the white. Let's go drag it back onto place. That is my call. Time for Thanksgiving. I got to run. So hope you found this helpful and we'll see you next time.